Okay, traders, that is 1 p.m. London time. And we are going to get started here with this week's live market and trade analysis session with me, Patrick Mundy. Before we jump into today's presentation, as always, want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. And most importantly, with respect to today's discussion, is the fact that the views and opinions expressed by me are solely mine. They're not indicative or representative those held by Ticknell UK or Ticknell Europe Limited. So um, for those that are here for the first time, a brief introduction to myself after I graduated from university. I joined a city PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found an exit consulting startup, which was focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. Essentially, I had a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people uh, make and lose a fortune in the market, sometimes quite literally overnight. So I decided to explore my curiosity for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading the S&P 500, or probably more appropriately at that stage, day gambling. And after some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out and as the market phase changed, I began to average down into losing positions, giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure hit to my capital. So this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. So I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and I sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months was a time during which I was not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing, since we back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality, all of which underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly of all, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and you have a professional trading mindset and you accept and understand the true nature of trading, simply being a numbers game in which you're playing the probabilities, you lose that emotional investment and hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, again, delivering annual positive returns. And I'm currently responsible for managing a multi million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm a resident market expert, exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Tickmill clients. I provide an in-depth daily market outlook, breaking down the fundamental and technical drivers for the trading day ahead. I also provide daily technical trade setups for about three to five markets that I'm actively tracking, and I share those through the Tickmill TradingView account. I also run 
Ticknell's rapidly growing uh, e-mini strategy Facebook group where I post a daily trade plan outlining my pre-market thoughts for the cash trading session ahead. I give my bias for the day and specific action areas where I'm looking to engage the market. These pre-market plans have delivered over 5,000 points of profit since we launched the group last April. Second Ticknell strategy group I run is for traders who really want to take their trading to the next level. Ticknell Futures Trading Telegram group is a real-time environment where on a daily basis, I share in-depth insights, analysis, and real-time trades. I also provide live market commentary during the opening hour of the cash session, but traders can essentially see in real time how I dissect the markets and identify asymmetric trading opportunities. These sessions act as a platform, helping traders to develop a professional, consistent approach to navigating the markets and the mental mind games that must be mastered to make it as a profitable market operator. So that gives you a flavor of where it is I'm coming from. We will now jump into the charts. I would say uh, before I get going here that um, if you have any questions, just drop them into the chat box and I will come back to them at the end of the presentation. Equally, if you want me to give you a view on an instrument that I uh, don't cover in my um, in my presentation, then again, you can just put that into the chat and I'll, uh, I'll take a look at the chart for you at the end of my presentation. So starting with the S&P 500 using the e-media futures contract, Last week, we were testing the support ahead of that CPI print, and I was uh, looking to the long side, got, uh, got an excellent, uh, well, really excellent week last week, trading to the long side through that CPI, and then up into the highs here into that 40-50 test. And so we're now correcting against this leg of upside. So what I'm looking for now is a pullback in a three-way pattern, which we're currently getting here. So I'm anticipating we're going to do something like this, test into this pivot 3910 area. From there, I'm watching for bullish reversal patterns to, uh, to engage on the long side, because I'm looking for another leg to the upside to develop here. And my ultimate, my target for this move is up into the 4120s. Now, got some nice confluence developing there. It's uh, monthly projected range resistance. We have this ascending trend line resistance as well coming in there. It's an equality objective, like I say, versus the swing structure here. For those who are unfamiliar with the term equality, it's basically looking for an equal leg swing to play out, or what Elliott Wave uh, would refer to as the ABC pattern, I guess. Um, and so, yeah, I'm looking for this uh, this 4120s to get tested. We also have the weekly descending trend line resistance. A high volume load there on the weekly chart. On the daily chart, we have a high volume area as well there. So what I'm anticipating is we get a move up into this 41.20. And from there, I'm going to be looking to uh, to short the market for, uh, for another leg of downside to develop. So we're going to see now, coming into this session, we've seen some weakness overnight. Uh, but we should test this 39.10, 39.15 area. And from there, like I say, watch for those bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side. At this stage, any close through the 3900 level will be a, a bearish development and would suggest that we're going to take another look at trend line support in this high volume area down to 38.45. So um, those are the key levels I'm watching as we head into the session today in the US. Moving to the NASDAQ, <clears throat> similar scenario here. Um, we actually traded to the initial target level that I had in mind last week versus this swing structure that we identified, and uh, we traded that 11,878. So we're now correcting in a similar fashion, and if we use the uh, trend-based FIB extension tool, we get a clearer target here. So what I'm looking for is 11,420 to get tested here to complete a corrective move. And then again, we watch for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side. And the next upside objective is up towards 12,200 uh, as the upside target on this move. Now, similarly, if we take out that 11,400 bearish development, we'd certainly think about a test down into weekly projected range support comes in at 11,200. 
and the prior highs before we broke out to the upside. So for now, still constructive at this stage, but we've got some key markers in terms of price uh, where we would start to uh, consider a, uh, a downside move developing in earnest. So moving to the Dow Jones, YN. Let's get ourselves some target areas here. So versus the swing high here, swing low here, and that's swing high. We are looking 33,059. Notice we've got a little low volume area here. So what I'm look, looking for is a test into this area. And again, we watch for a bullish reversal patterns here to engage on the long side, looking for the next leg of upside to develop in the Dow up into these prior highs, uh, 34,370 is the uh, is the target for this move. And then I think we might see a more meaningful correction develop in line with, uh, with the S&P. The Dow has been outperforming. Obviously, it's a it's, a, it's a, uh, an index that is heavily weighted towards value stocks. Um, we have on the opposite end of the scale, obviously, the NASDAQ, which is heavily weighted towards growth stocks. And so in this environment where uh, obviously we're, we're in a, you know, rates are being raised, access to capital is becoming more difficult. We anticipate that the Dow would outperform the NASDAQ in this, uh, in this scenario. And that's what we're seeing play out. Moving to the DAX. Nice bullish structure here in the DAX. We could uh, we could be in a situation now, I think, where uh, we probably have a wave three high in place here. So I'm going to redraw this. <clears throat> what I'm looking for now is a move equal to uh, the wave two, uh, sorry, the wave two consolidation to develop. So what I do is I just measure those, overlay this versus our high, and that gives me a target area for this. Uh, if we're going to see this corrective move <coughs> play out here. So what we've been looking for is something like this into that ascending trend line support, 13,780. And then we look for our wave five extension to play out equal at a minimum to our wave one here. And so you can see we just overlay that versus that, and that gives us our target. So what I've looked for is any move into that 13,780 to engage, watch your bullish reversal patterns, engage on the long side, then that gives us a target up into 14,650. We also have <coughs> monthly projected range resistance coming in there at 14,580. Similarly, in terms of uh, in terms of identifying you know, the, the quality of the structure that we're actually trading, if we take out this support area on a closing basis, then we could be looking at a more protracted pullback developing. But for now, we want to trade the sequence as it's playing out in uh, in front of us. So 13,780, 13, 13,800 is the key support area to watch on the downside. Moving to the Nikkei. <clears throat> Nikkei trading to our target that we identified last week. Uh, now we are looking at another test of support here. So we have this uh, wedge pattern developing. <clears throat> so what we're looking for is support to hold here into 27,760. Watch for bullish reversal patterns there. And really but then what we need or want to see is a confirmation to close back through this uh, trend line resistance. So uh, take out the 28,150 area on a closing basis to encourage long positions. Next upside objective is 28,745 is our target, as long as we hold support here at the 27,700. If we take that out on a closing basis, that suggests that we'll, uh, we'll see a deeper pullback and we have this trend line support coming in down to 26,500 there on the downside. So if we take this out on a closing basis, certainly look at it here on the daily time frame, then that would encourage uh, short positions to uh, to target the, the support zone to the downside. Nifty, another one we were looking at last week. It's got a nice clean bullish structure. It was looking for a test of the trend line, didn't get it. We extended up into the target zone and we're now seeing a pullback. So what I look for now in the Nifty is any three wave corrective move that tests and holds into uh, the 18,130 area to engage on the long side, looking for 
a minimum five equals one objective. Uh, we have our wave one here. You can see we're just measuring that in terms of the quality test. So that gives a test up into 18,700 as our upside objective there in terms of the nifty. Moving to the bonds, TLT traded to our target. We've actually hit our second target of the 101 level. So we're now looking at a further upside extension. Next target on TLT is going to be 102.85 level on the upside. So we can adjust our target there now. And, uh, and we'll be looking for, let me just let me draw that. So we have this scenario playing out at the moment. So we're looking for that 102.70 area. If we can get through there on a closing basis, and this is an important piece of uh, market generated information in terms of my style of trading these markets is that if we can get it close through that 102.85, then this move is going to start to become impulsive as opposed to corrective. And so any goes through there, then I'm going to reassess uh, upside targets here because what we'd look for would be the extensions versus this being a, uh, a wave one. And so we can then start to think about the 261 extension on the upside, uh, 105.60s. And the more often uh, or the more <coughs> likely target we would actually trade on the upside is that 110, which is the three 618 extension of our wave to consolidation, which we often see play out in terms of the technical targets to the upside. Moving to the dollar index and some of these Forex pairs. So dollar index traded through our target at 107. And then we were looking for a test of 105.97, which we've got. So we now have a new downside objective. And uh, let's see if we can identify an entry opportunity here. So if we use the swing structure, we would look for a test now into 107.50. We have this descending trend line resistance. So this is the type of scenario I've been looking for here now is this three-way corrective move to test up into this area. And then we look for our next downside objective, which is the 161 extension at 104.40s uh, in terms of the, uh, the next target on the downside. At this stage, we really need to close back above uh, 108.60 to suggest that the downside correction in terms of the dollars is potentially complete. Um, possible, but less probable, I would suggest at this stage, we look for this uh, resistance just below the 108 handle, bearish reversal patterns there to engage on the short side, 105, 104.40s would be the next downside objective. So obviously we have the euro trading inverse to the dollar. Let's see where our target is here. And so again, we are looking for a three-way corrective move to play out. Right that down here so we're looking now for the euro to pull back into this 102.50 area from there watch for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side next upside objective in the euro is 106.20s now that 106.20s here on the weekly time frame coincides with the weekly trend line resistance uh, back from those highs posted uh, in 2021 there. So we've got some nice confidence developing there. So we want to watch for this pullback to come into that 102.40, 102.50 area, look for a bullish reversal pattern there, engage on the long side. You can equally, if you're a little bit more risk averse and wait for the price to clear back through the trend line resistance here, trend channel that we have developing. Um, so back through the 104 handle, uh, you've still got plenty of upside to play for there in terms of targeting that 106.20 on the upside. At this stage, it really take a close back through trend line support here, uh, the 101.80s, to suggest a, uh, a more meaningful high is in place and then pull back. <clears throat> First objective would be into the midpoint of the channel here, uh, just above parity. Sterling, similar setup. We are looking now, let me just remove that and bring in our trend-based FIB extension tool and get some targets here. So we want, we want to see Sterling put in a test of 11730s. From there, we watch for bullish reversal patterns. So this is the pattern we're looking at. 
three wave corrective move now into that 107.20 got some trend line support just below 117 and then we look for our upside extension to our target area of 120.60 Let's see, we've got a question here. Let's see again. Let me see. Um, yeah, I'll I'll try and find that at the end, uh, Jorge. Uh, the EWZ Brazilian ETF. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll see if we can dig that out on Trading View once uh, once I've run through these other charts. So that's what we're looking for here. One seventeen twenty bullish reversal patterns engage on the long side, and we're looking for move up into one twenty. Dollar yen. This one hit our targets last week. We were looking for 143.20, 141, uh, 141.13, and then we ultimately traded down into our target 139.20s. So what's the what's the information we get from this? Well, if you think about what I was just saying with respect to these 161 extensions, once we trade through these, this then gives us uh, a high probability scenario that we're in an impulsive move. And so we look then for three wave corrections to uh, to engage on the short side. So if we uh, use this, so versus this low here, our swing high. So our first area of interest is going to be three wave corrective move that essentially takes us into 141.40s. And see, we've got a high volume node here, or high volume area, sorry. So 141.40s is going to be an area of interest. And from there, we'll be looking for bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side. And uh, let me just show you another measurement that's also worthwhile. Let's use this. So we've got some additional confluence there versus this last major corrective move. So 141.30, 141.40, we're looking for bearish reversal patterns here. And we want to engage on the short side. And we've been looking then for a uh, five equals one downside objective. Let's overlay that to there. So that will actually give us a new target on the downside of 134.30s. And we, on the daily time frame here, we can see 134.90s is the high volume node uh, over the past year. So you can see the confidence developing there for that downside test. So pay close attention to 141.30, 141.50 area. Watch bearish reversal patterns there. And we are going to be targeting move down to. Uh, 134, 50, 135 as the next major uh, downside objective in terms of the dollar yen. Uh, moving to dollar CAD. This one also traded to our target from last week. We were looking for a test of 133.20s. We got that. Uh, and we are now looking for 131.60s. So we're looking at a three way corrective move here. Uh, let's move this over a bit. <clears throat> so the initial area that I'd be interested in watching is move equal in scope to the last corrective leg. So 134.04 is the area to watch here. Watch bearish reversal patterns to engage on the downside. 131.60s is the next upside objective. If we clear that 134, if we don't get any response in terms of sellers there, then we'd anticipate that we get up into this uh, the midpoint of the prior channel there, coming in 134.90, 135. Again, from there, I watch bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side, targeting the move down to that 131.60s in terms of the dollar CAD. The Aussie also traded to targets. 67.60 was our target, and we, uh, we've clipped that, and we're now seeing pullback. So what we're looking for here in terms of the Aussie is, let's see, use this swing here. And that's one. So we're testing into the support area here. So we're watching now to see if we can get bullish reversal patterns in this 66.10 area. Bullish reversal patterns there. Our next upside objective in terms of the Aussie is going to be 68.80s on the upside. Uh, is the target area, the next technical target for the upside extension here. We didn't really get any meaningful divergence into that last high. So that leads me to believe that there's a high probability that this is a wave three high. So we're looking for a wave four low and a fifth wave upside extension. 
similar setup in terms of the Kiwi. Kiwi traded to targets from last week, 6160s. So we are now looking for a three-wave pullback to develop here. Let's remove that for one second. Bring in our measurement tool. So we're sitting right into the support area here. A daily projected range score at that 60, 50 level. So we want to see bullish reversal patterns here. And, uh, and then we're going to be looking for a fifth wave extension uh, to the upside. Initially, we are, our target level is going to be 62.40s as the first area of interest. I believe that's the high volume node on the daily time frame there. So uh, that's going to be our target. So we watch the bullish reversal patterns at uh, 60.50 area, and then we're targeting a move up into the 62.40s on the upside. Moving to gold. Again, traded through our target. We were looking for a test last week, 17.50. Got through that. Uh, on a uh, on that CPI print last week. And so what we're looking at now is a corrective move to play out here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we should at least see another move to the upside. So we're looking at a three-way correction <clears throat> back into 1750. That's the area I'd be paying attention to. If we can test and hold 1750, then we are looking for the next upside objective will be 1820s. On the upside, in terms of uh, in terms of gold, so we want to see a retest 1750 bullish reversal patterns. There we engage on the long side, and we're looking then for 1820 as our next upside objective for this move in terms of gold. Crude oil still in this range trade. Uh, talked about this last week. Nothing for me to do here. Uh, let's just draw in where we have the equality objective now yeah so you as i suggested last week we're going to we're holding this range so what i'm looking for is an equal legs move that gets us down into this 81 handle We've got daily projected and monthly projected range support there so we watch for bullish reversal patterns in this area and the first upside objective is going to be back into the high volume node at 88 in terms of crude oil and wrapping things up with Bitcoin, consolidating after the uh, significant declines uh, driven by the FTX scandal, uh, looking for a test here of 18,320 versus this swing low at 15,800. But again, and I've, I've, I've pressed this uh, over the weeks, and the area I'm really interested in in terms of Bitcoin is 12,185. If we get down there, I'm going to be looking to establish a long-term position in Bitcoin, as I believe that that, uh, that sale is going to offer some real value. We've got the high volume there just below 10,000. So that's going to be a key area uh, for of interest for me anyway. I don't trade Bitcoin that regularly in terms of from a leveraged uh, position. But I, do, uh, I do hold it in terms of my balance sheet as a as a position trade uh, from time to time. And that 12,185 is an area that I'm looking to uh, to acquire some exposure to Bitcoin on a longer term. I'm talking about a three to five year outlook, not, uh, not a, a leverage trading position as such. So that uh, gives you the whistle stop tour of what I'm watching as we head into the back end of next week, uh, back end of this week, sorry, and uh, into uh, the early part of next week. So, uh, Huawei EWZ, let's see if we can find that and uh, we'll have take a quick look at it. Uh, EWZ, ah, uh, doesn't look like they uh, they have it, uh, Huawei. Let's see, maybe Brazilian. No. Ah. That's why. One second. Let's try that again. EWZ. <clears throat> yeah, here we go. Let's take a look at this. So, let's start on the weekly time frame, first of all, and let's connect some areas of interest. So, trading. I would suggest in a triangle here <clears throat> on the weekly time frame, we've got scope down to 
So I will be looking at any close through the trendline support here on a daily basis, 29.24, to target a move down to 25.50. And then from there on the daily time frame, I'll be watching for bullish reversal patterns uh, to engage on the long side. And the first target on the upside then will be 31.97, uh, the high volume node there on the weekly chart, similarly on the daily charts. Uh, 3190s so yeah any well I can you can see actually in the pre-market we're actually going to open below that trend line support so uh, the downside target now on this one is 2560s 2570s and then from there watch for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side and uh, next target there 3180s and get through there then trend line resistance 3460s any other questions anyone want me to take a look at a chart I haven't covered my presentation there. Does that make sense, Jorge? Okay, I can't see any questions coming through. One thing I will do uh, just quickly for those who are here for the first time, here's the link to that uh, the Facebook group I run. You can uh, just request access and you'll get my daily trade plan for the S&P 500. And then for those who want to follow along with the setups in terms of the TradingView account, I'll post a link for that. Okay, guys, if there aren't any other questions, you're welcome, Jorge. Uh, we'll wrap this one up here and we'll reconvene at the same time next week. As always, traders, plan the trade. Trade the plan. Most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.